Should we let him in? The executive producer in the booth just said, go ahead, let him in. We have enough chairs? There's plenty, plenty of seats up front. People just want to... Okay, come on down. Don't be shy. Welcome to our little session today. Um, it's going to be a, a bit of a janky session as we enter the janky time machine. So the plan is... Uh, we're trying something out. We just said, let's let's just do this live. Uh, we've been, we talked about it for a bit and at the risk of continuing to talk about it, we decided we're just gonna do this thing. We're gonna test it out, see how it goes. I think we've got some plans on doing this a little bit more regularly. I'm going to probably continue to do stuff like add maybe tutorials on how I do the AI Photoshop mock-up composition, how I actually turn design fiction ideas into tangible artifacts to consume and enjoy. But today what we're going to do is play with the cards. Uh, and there's no one way to do it. There are many ways that you can do it. We're going to just freestyle and, and figure something out. And if at any point you would have a question uh, or you want to participate, just raise your little Zoom hand. I think there's a little button at the bottom down there that makes you raise your hand. And uh, Nick De Palma, our um, announcer, um, is going to uh, invite you, unmute you, and invite you to participate. And uh, we're just going to keep this free flowing and uh, and and easy going, and we're going to have a good time. Yeah, I love it. Cool. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna mess up plenty. We're gonna have to stop stop shooting, kind of reset. <laughs> Yeah, reset. Do That's do the takeover lights. again. Some lights. We're gonna do the takeover again. All right. So uh, on my side here, I've got this uh, fantastic box. If you don't have this, you should definitely pick it up. It is a work of uh, wonder. And today we're going to play with the cards. <clears throat> now, um, you know we've got uh, different decks inside. Uh, you'll notice that there is. Uh, an archetype deck. There's an object deck. I mean, it's, it's deck that I usually refer to them as faces. What, faces. What, what do they call them? Or, or, or uh, what are they called? The two of clubs. What is that? I don't know. That a would suit. be a, a suit. Yeah. Suit. Suit. Yeah. Suit. Yeah. That's right. suit. Yeah. All right. So we've got the action suit, and there's the attributes suit here. Now this is pared down from your previous. Your previous deck, Julian, your previous deck had a, uh, let's see, I've got one kicked around here somewhere. You had, I had five, I think. Yeah. You had the tone card in your previous yeah. deck. Yeah. Can I explain to you why, why that was, was, was. Yeah. Yeah, so, love to yeah. So it was, it was purely a logistics thing because the, it turns out with, um, with, with the extra cards, the deck went above eight ounces. And so it was harder to ship to the places that we end up shipping. So it was like a purely practical decision. I knew I had to trim about 26 cards mm. in order to um, make it, you know, not have to, because it's already when we, when we, when we sell the decks, we, we subsidize a significant portion of the shipping because it's yeah. crazy to ship, you know, um, little things around, around the world. And so it was actually one of the things that we're talking about doing is like, if we had near future laboratory squads in, you know, whatever major capital cities, then we could be much more efficient getting these things around and, and, and we could expand the deck. Um, so anyway, that was just a conversation having with some of our, some of our team in Japan. The, uh, oh, that's, in that's interesting. I, uh, I like the tone deck or the tone suit because it had some really interesting things that you could do, but, uh, yeah, in the, the thing, there... you could, you could, you could add the, add it into the mix. There's nothing yeah. that you can't. Well, hang on. Let me just reach here. I've got, everything is in. The Isn't there always that, that deck of cards at the, uh, at your, at, at the cabin in the woods that you go to like two or three times a year. Sometimes yeah. it's just mixed, mixed cards because you're yeah. missing because at one point someone in frustration threw down their, their bad hand of at poker and the cards got lost forever. So you're like, or somebody, okay. somebody played that old joke, you know, have you ever paid, played 52 pickup? Yeah. Like, no. And then they, they riffle the cards all over the room. All right, pick it up. That's right. Yeah. The, uh, just so that you know, the tone deck included. That was uh, from the previous edition of the deck. Like a show, solar punk, carbon based, 
uh, you know, if Rolex made it war zone. So if you did want to incorporate the tone deck, you could probably just pick up the last version of the work kit if it's still in stock. Totally sold out. Totally sold out. Well, guess what? Uh, you'll have to wait for Julian to create the expansion pack. Oh, yeah. Expansion pack's a good idea. Yeah, expansion pack with dragons and wizards. I like that. I never even thought about that. That's a project. Oh. There you go. That's why I'm here. Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. So let's let's talk about the individual things. Um, so uh, you know the archetype, which is, I think the 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 central uh, the central uh, position of the the artifact. It's the it's the evidence to the implication. It's the hint to that future that we're pointing at. Um, I like to look at the object as the, you know, I like to look at it as this is the science fiction. This is the design fiction. The science fiction might be the, the technology, the societal dilemma, whatever it is, this is what you're kind of inventing. The, the attribute, there's a whole bunch of different attributes here, like um, generative pre-trained. So this seems like it signals, right? Blockchain. How would you define the attributes beyond the word attribute? Uh, it's like, it's a, it's a characteristic. It's kind of like a, um, like a, like a, like an undergirding, um, s set of sy like a system or principle, or, you know, in, in, if you want to really dig down to it, it's like a, the, um, a, you know, specific technology idiom, uh, category of, of, a, of a thing, a, a quality of it in a way is, is what I think of as attribute. Mm-hmm. And then, and then lastly is uh, the action. The action is the, you know, maybe the functionality we've got to translate, tokenize, compress, institutionalize, memify, or go viral, sonify, oops, deep fake, geolocate, surveil. So this is like this, this, you know, specific thing that happens and 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 whether it's part of the technology or part of the I like to think of the technology the societal dilemma and everything in between the hard and the soft i guess um that's a the i think when you combine all of these together and what i like to do is kind of do these three cards first object uh attribute and action and then and then the archetype is, is it's not that I'm doing it first. It's I'm doing it separately. I'm thinking about this separately than I'm thinking about these three. I don't know how you think about it when you're I, doing I, it. I, I like that. I, I oftentimes, um, because I, I, I so much enjoy the thinking about the archetype, it's not necessarily that I start about that, but I sort of have it kind of in mind. So I will pull an archetype and be like, okay, you, you know, let's, let's see how it, you know, let's see where it sort of guides me. Like, I think I start with the container, which is what I think the archetype of is like mm -hmm. if it's a billboard ad or, or, you know, a beverage drink or something that, you know, container. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just really like archetypes. Okay. Well, that's a good, that's a good thing to, to, to think about. So the archetype. Oh, so, um, I'm sorry. Someone mentioned the 70, 20, 10 deck. Steve mentioned. Oh, the Steve. Yeah. Deck, um, suit. All right. So uh, my audio is dropping a little bit as I turn my head. And that is because this is a dynamic microphone that I have to eat. So I'm going to be mindful of that. And uh, if I'm not, Nick, just uh, just go, yo, and I will uh, I will come back to it. All right. So as far as the archetype goes, um, there are a lot of of different archetypes. Uh, Isabella, Isabella, Isabella on Discord created this wonderful uh, archetype. Pinterest board that shows a whole bunch of different uh, uh, design fiction archetypes ranging from user manuals to repair guides to uh, name tags to museum passes. And this is a nice way to create a variety of design fiction. And when I do my design fiction daily, I try to be cognizant that I'm not repeating the same thing over and over again. Uh, advertising is a really easy, not easy, it's it's a fruitful way to express design fiction because you can load it up with a lot of stuff. You can put copy in there, even though it breaks the rules of advertising by having too much copy and over explaining. It makes for fantastic storytelling. Uh, so I try not to do too many ads and balance it out with uh, with other things like remembering, oh, I need a a repair manual or I should do something like a birthday card or what what about a sign on the road? So when we look at the archetypes, we'll just take a quick peek at what we've got going on over here. 
move, I'll move these out of the way. Point this closer to me. Whoops. Now we've got uh, a lay a lay flat thing, which is like nulling. We've got a ticket. We've got a trend report, instruction manual. So one way that I might do it when I'm doing a design fiction daily is I might scan the archetypes and try to find something that I I might not have done. That's a good challenge. It's like, oh, I haven't done like out of here. It's funny. I think I've done most of these. Let me look around here. There's a spec sheets, retro signage, product review, quick start guide, coffee mug, hygiene product. I've literally done every single one of these. Um, receipt, press release, a map of some sort. I like this idea of a map of some sort because it it it's open. There's like, a, oh, okay, of some sort. I don't know what that is. I, I don't think this this is a very terrible camera, so it doesn't focus very well. But uh, I think I think Julian, we should play with a map of some sort. I like it. All right, like cool. Of some sort. So here's here's a good way. It um, another way we could have done this is we could have just randomly chosen a card off of the top of the deck and let chance ride ride the old chance wagon, but. Uh, which is to say that there's no, there's no hard and fast way. So this is yeah. like uh, just to just to emphasize that this is um, for those of you who remember the unstructured play when you were kids, if if you were allowed to do that, this very much falls in that category. So some one of the one question I'll get, you know, maybe two out of every hundred questions I'll get about this is like, well, what are the rules? Um, and then you sort of know the character of the of the person who asked that, because if you say there are no rules, it doesn't really make sense. But the the point is to really kind of um, find your way of imagining that you're trapped. You've gone to some other adjacent now or some near future or whatever it is, and you found an artifact. And that's what we're doing here. We're we're constructing the artifact from this particular world. Like you're uh, some of you probably heard me say it's like you're a like you're an archaeologist, but rather than digging into the past, you're digging into the future. Yeah. You know, archaeologist you find a, you find a thing like it might be a coffee mug it might be a map it might be uh you know some kind of consumer packaged good and that's what we're that's what we're trying to construct here there's yeah. no right or wrong answer it's more the exercise it's like what's the point of running if you're just going to come back to where you started trip in the chat is um is uh characterizing this as a recipe which i love it's mm. like oh we should really use this map of some sort because it's like it's been in the fridge for a while and it's going to go bad if we don't if we don't do something with it so let's prioritize this as our as our main ingredient love it that's really good and then uh, rizwan asks a question here uh if you haven't created one of these archetypes before do you research it beforehand oh yeah absolutely i I'm, a lot of these archetypes are are um, like in this example, for instance, like the, okay, a lot of archetypes, you know, we've all seen a menu, we've all seen an instruction manual and there are very, there are many types of instruction manuals. Like think of like, um, like Ikea, that's, that's a very classic instruction guide that we could, um, we could riff off without too much research, but a map, I've seen a bunch of maps. I'd probably need to research the the legend. I think the legend would be an important aspect in the archetype to help develop that story a little bit more. Uh, the little, uh, uh characters that you might that you might create the topology names that, for things. the topology yeah the names that you give things like when we did the uh the 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 magazine uh the emotional magazine julian we had that one uh, map of yosemite and we 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 chose a character from our our universe the the choked elk and we cr created choke elk choked elk mountain and created a little icon of like an elk upside down with x's for eyes and it just added to the <laughs> this character, which I thought was. And I think cool. I think it's a really good it's a really good question because I think that's part of the part of the the work is to really study the archetype itself. Um, and and you know almost like I'm I'm a big map person, so that's, I think that's why this one ended up in the deck. Is like looking at what different kind you know how do maps make sense help you make sense of the world and studying them as if as if it you know it really mattered. So you don't want to um, and then that's part of the process of like kind of learning. How do you represent things from from possible worlds? So, um, mm -hmm. collecting these things is uh, is you know is, is part of it, and then studying them 
really extensively, you know, way, the ways in which advertisements are presented, if, if an advertisement or a billboard and it's, it's sparse use of, um, of, uh, of, of text. Um, and just looking at the ways in which, as if your job was to make a map, like you wouldn't just be like, okay, here, I think I'm done. You'd want to get it to feel as if it was a thing coming from a world. And then in the, in the final, in the final iteration, if you're going to take the, the, uh, the idea to, you know, to, to the point of like, um, production, like actual manufacturing of the menu or of the, of the map, you would want all those details right so that when you share it with someone, they're not like, oh, this is a cute drawing. They're kind of like, wait, what is this? Where's this a map from? You yeah, want that this, level of believability. Yeah, the, the process is, this is this is a writing process is what we're doing. This, this is a fun game. And just like writing, as you write, you start to come up with ideas and then you want your ideas to be good. You want your writing to be good. So you, you have to inform yourself if you're not uh, already familiar with the subject matter. Uh, and you might be a little bit familiar but it might be a matter of, of, um, of becoming even more. A uh, good example was when I was doing a design fiction, when I did the e-coffee and e-cigarettes entry the other day, that was based off of something, Julian, you, you said in your last podcast, you had mentioned something about like the extinction of coffee beans. Mm. And, I, and I thought, oh, that's cool. I like that idea. That's a good idea to play with. And I just happened to be on Discord with Drew while he was working on a flat plan for another project. And I told him what I was doing. And then he had said, oh, yeah, there's this uh, fungus called rust. Mm. And that, okay, rabbit hole, went down the rust rabbit hole. I learned about it. I even mentioned its scientific name in there like I knew what I was talking about. But yeah, definitely research involved. Um, let's get to the next deck, the, uh, the, the object deck. So this one, what do you, what do you say? Do you want to do a random? Want to ride the chance wagon on this one and see what uh, what comes up? We could we could do that, sure. You can say yeah or nay. Oh, a vertical takeoff and landing or VTOL. Yeah. Drone okay. thing. Okay. Okay. Are we are we feeling it? Or I'm do, feeling do that. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that's connecting in some way. All right, let's do it. All right. So we have this uh, VTOL. And at any point we can change these cards or add to the cards if we want. Um, let's take a look at the uh, attributes here. I'm gonna shuffle. Uh, the deck, and then I'm just going to flip a card over. If we like it, we'll use it. If we don't like it, we uh, we can not use it. So uh, attribute number one we have here, uh, it's playful. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm into playful. Yeah. Well, we got things that are flying and they're playful and maps. So this is all feeling okay. Well, there's, there's also mesmerizing. Mm -hmm. We could do playful and mesmerizing, kind of mash up. Okay. Here, let's do this. Well, let's let's call it the. Playful or mesmerizing, it depends on 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 what we're feeling. And then the action, what's it doing? I like playful and mesmerizing. I think there's playful feels active, mesmerizing feels passive. Mm -hmm. You can be playful and mesmerizing, passive, playful. It adds a new dynamic to it. All right, so the action, what does it do? Gamify. I feel like that, it's good, but it maybe it's obvious. Maybe we'll, we'll try a different one. What about... Discard. Mm. Oh, that's weird. Speaking of discard, be sure to join the Discord when you mm. get a chance. <laughs> I think there's something there. You think you feel okay? Well, I'm going to trust you on the on the Discord. Um, nothing was clicking right away, but let, I'm 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 curious to see where it goes. Well, I think that's the reason why I was choosing it because nothing was clicking for me right away, which okay. is like okay, that okay. Gotta, I'm going to imagine harder. We're going to have yeah, to imagine harder on this. All right, I'm just going to take a quick peek at the 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 thing. Okay, Dave, hey Dave, uh, do you have a map of the janky time machine? How do you know where you're going? Uh, Dave, we do not have a map of the janky Correct time machine. When he meant when I think. Oh, uh, how do you know when you're going? Where? Well, yeah, when you're going. Um, but uh, no, there is no map of the janky time machine. It it uh, it, it kind of works. It does take you into the future. We do know that. Uh, when and where it takes it, it you. It's between adjacent now, but but that's uh, that that just could be me. Oh, 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 dispose. Oh, oh, sorry. Hang on. I'm I'm. Let me just go through the chat here. Sorry. Um, all I know is that there's a button that says "Do not press." That we're not allowed to press and Let's, a dial for the time that just doesn't seem to be mechanically connected to anything it's kind of like a floppy yeah. dial it, it's it, it's it feels a lot like tuning in an old television where you're you're somewhere you're in the liminal space between channel 2 and channel 5 
and you, you have to bang the side of it and it might get you to like channel 4.1. It, it, you don't quite go there. It, it does often take you to uh, very specific places like kitchens and bodegas and, um, and, uh, and, and playgrounds with just these random everyday places. It seems to where, where it likes to go. The, uh, the, the, the equally serious um, reason is that I think if we start putting times on things, then we've added too much structure to the, to the exercise. And so just imagining that it's a possible place and time rather than a specific one. If you start doing specific dates then someone inevitably chimes in, it's like, I don't think we're on track to get that by that time. And then all of a sudden you've got a bunch of doubt and kind of defensive reactions in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the workshop, as opposed to like, I don't know where we're going, yeah. but we're so going to go someplace for sure. And there's probably, we could probably get in a time machine now and go to some place that's precisely the same date and end up somewhere in the world where it's like, I had no idea they were working on this. Look at this. This is amazing or weird or scary. So I think the time thing is a little bit of a, little bit of a setup brought to you by commercial futurists. Yeah. Um, Shabon has a question about uh, artifact versus object. Did you want to unpack that for him? Uh, let me see the question. It says, I struggle to understand the difference between an archetype and an object. Mm -hmm. Map sounds like an object and muddles my brain up. Yeah. So a, a map can be an object and maybe on the other end of this, it, we will have an object if we, if we constructed a, you know, a map uh, out of, you know, paper or something or on a display. Um, and it's also, it's also a type of thing. So it could be, um, you know, just a, a container for a set of ideas represented as a, you know, as a, as a flat kind of 2D representation of a city. So I, I appreciate the, the brain model and, and, and sometimes these things can sluice back and forth. Um, but, but in this case, like take it as a, as a kind of container um, as opposed to the, uh, the object. I mean, you know, it's, it's like an advertisement is an archetype of a, of a you know, communication type of communication. Mm -hmm. And it's also an advertisement, the thing that you see, you know, in a page of a magazine. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, yeah, the definition of an object, you're right. It, it is uh, a map is an object. The way I like to look at it is that I always look at the object as being more of the science fiction and this being more of the design fiction. And the design fiction is if you were, if you were, you know, we're, the, we're these uh, reverse archeologists, we go into the future, we find a thing and we want to bring it back to the present and we want to show you, hey, this is what he found in the future. We'll get in this context. I don't think we would huck back a giant drone. I don't think it would fit in the janky time machine, but you know what? There's a map that was near it. So I'm going to grab that mm -hmm. and it's going to tell us the story of this drone. I'm going to grab the map and I'm going to bring that back. And I feel like the archetype is um is the is evidence. I like using the word evidence, evidence. but it it hints at what it is. It, it isn't the technology. It's the evidence of the technology or it's the evidence of the societal change. I hope that that helps uh, uh, clarify how we're, we're thinking of archetype versus object in these sets of cards. Evidence is a good one. Implications or a symptom of the world. Mm -hmm. Like the, like the, uh, the archaeologist analogy, which isn't perfect, but, you know, like they just kind of get these artifacts, these, these, you know, like a physical object, a shard of pottery or or this kind of thing. And then it's it sort of, it's meant to imply that, well, there were people here and they did certain things and maybe, I don't know, this could have been something they cooked in or something they used to, uh, you know, situate themselves within the, the culture or an amulet of some description, but you don't know what it is. And it's a clue, but it's a clue. It's a clue. It's like, you're like a forensic detective. That's the other analogy. Yeah. Like you're trying to make sense of what just happened here. What was here? What happened? Yeah. There's no one here to tell you. Yeah, there's, what's the thing you can sneak into your pocket? The there's, there's a body in the bathtub. Oh, I don't know. What happened? <laughs> um, Chris says something uh, about uh, our archetypes adjacent to the object. And I said, yeah, that's. I think that's a good way of looking at it. They're adjacent to the object. Um, let's see. Jason's got an idea. Disposable, disposable spatial maps. I like I like that, that th this little piece of design fiction, uh, this idea. Uh, is this quick little three word uh, description. You took four cards and turned them into three words. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, so uh, 
I'm, I'm just going to freestyle and, and say some of the things that are going on in my, in my head right now. And Julian, you can just pop in at any time, but uh, yeah. Okay. So I like the idea of a map. My brain goes into like, I love the design of maps. Uh, there are lots of different types of maps as they involve drones. I imagine the drone might be making the map. Hmm. Or in the, the reverse, it's a map of drone activities. Uh, yeah. It's a map of like things that drones are doing. Like, you know, when you go on Google Maps, you can turn on uh, the cycling route. Oh, that's it. Like it's a cycling route. Maybe there's a there's a there's a drone route you can turn on. That would be a good design fiction. Uh, you're, you're looking at your screen and and what you're seeing is like choose to go by car, by transit, by bicycle or by drone. And one of the filters would be take the take the playful route by drone. What does that mean? I don't know. Maybe it goes over. I'm liking this over houses with swimming pools <laughs> or uh, and it'll let you drop, or maybe, it, maybe you could hook up water balloons to your drone and you can drop some water balloons along the way. So part of what I'm feeling oh, as, as you just were describing comes in. is, is that there's, um, that it is a, uh, it's a, it's a drone rich world. Yeah. And that, that there would be something like a, like a map. I, I like the idea of a map of drone activity. Um, and, uh, I even want to push it into a direction so like drone is it has such a kind of pejorative sensibility to it i feel like mm -hmm. because of the ways in which they're often used and plus i don't know the dr part of a drone just doesn't sound so you need know, to run for that drone <laughs> that's right so i you know part of me is wondering like if we if if it was uh plus that image of the vtol drone thing is a little bit um Austere, wondering if there's a way of imagining that it's a world where these are like in beautiful service to to normal ordinary everyday people they're not they're not uh the eye of saranon kind of drone vibe and somehow this map you know this this map and the playful connection i think maybe because of the playful um it's, it's somehow you know we want to represent that these are these are these are facilitating some kind of um, you know pretty cool uh, dynamic social dynamic of some description. Mm -hmm. The pool thing is interesting. Well, I wonder why you went to pools. I know pools seem playful. That seems like the, the 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 playful playful thing to do. Yeah. All right, I like this idea. The um, I'm I'm. Uh, trying to put together a little Miro board here that I'm going to try and plug into the video nozzle. I'll do that in a quick second to maybe capture some of these thoughts. But um, part of, I think, design fiction is that you're not trying to tell the whole story. You're trying to, you're trying to hint at the world. And what I love is that uh, I'm not trying to be thorough in what I'm doing um, with, with the, the design fiction dailies. I'm, I'm literally picking one small thing to explore. And at the end of the session, I usually have just as many questions as anybody else would have looking at this. I've thought about it a little bit. I've got some ideas of where it might go, but I'm a lot more curious about what other people might conjure uh, in their brains when they see something like, uh, like, like, like this, this idea of this, this drone rich world, uh, this map of sorts. So Julian, where, where did you, where did, how did you end up tying on the playful and disc, the discard? I, I got uh, distracted there for a quick second. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the, the playful, it tipped me into trying to imagine like it's a, it's a, is, is where my mind went when I started thinking about like, okay, drone, like I wanted to rehabilitate or, or, you know, invest the idea of a drone with not a kind of, um you know, an annoyance or it, you know, at best or at worst, a, a representation of a of a of a weapon or a surveillance state kind of vibe mm -hmm. or, or all the all wherever you know wherever the 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 sense making around drone goes in a um uh not necessarily you know doesn't sound like a very habitable world sounds like a place i want to avoid um and so just trying to think of where of, of how playful can be introduced um and i guess pl not not just not the playful in the, in the sense of a drone as a you know, as a toy or like drone racing or that kind of thing. Like if there was a map, you know, and, and these drones are kind of occupying the, uh, you know, 
the uh, the 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 Class B airspace above our heads. Um, what are they doing? You know, what 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 are they facilitating? What kind of are they doing something that isn't surveillance statey and isn't weapons e kind of kind of thing? And so, what might that be? And why might everyone want a map? Like you need you you arrive in some city. It's like, hey, could I have your, you know, where where can I pick up a copy of the drone map? And then what is what is it? You know, I don't know if we have to say what it's necessarily showing, but just implying that like, oh, if someone wants a map with a kind of happy go lucky um, tone to their to their inquiry. You know, at the coffee shop, it's like I'm just trying to get the find the drone map for, for, uh, for for Tokyo. And you, your mind starts wondering, like, what would that be doing? What would it provide that person? And again, and maybe Dre, to your point, like not not assuming that it's um that it has to be um not assuming that we have to answer the question. We're implying almost that. So what, what do we mean by that? Maybe maybe a richer description or understanding is that, you know, there's like always the science fiction apocalypse movie. The one I'm watching now is uh, I can't remember the name of it. Just went on my head um, where the, something has happened like, like you know, um, Cormac McCarthy's uh, The Road. You'd never know what happened, but something happened. Some, you know, catastrophic planetary level existential event. And uh, and so now we're left in the apocalypse, right? And then so now you can tell a story about a father and his relationship with his with his with his son. Um, but but you but the implication is something planetary, yeah, planetary scale happened. Can you do the same thing with with this drone map? So we don't know what they are or what they provide, but people want them. And if we were if this were the premise of a of a movie that wasn't apocalyptic. Um, you might sort of get a hint, like, hmm, okay, I get what's going on here. It's like a, it's like an artifact of the of the larger world, which tells you as much about the world as um, as you need. You don't need to go into the full description of what exactly it is and how it works and who runs it or this kind of thing. Um, but it, but even as I say that, my mind wants to go to that, to to understanding what kind of world would there be, and what kind of world would it be in which there are drones that are doing something, you know, cool and interesting and, and helpful and, and all that kind of stuff. So someone wrote, let's see, Eric wrote drone pollinator scurrying about the city from flower to flower. That's kind of cool. Maybe, you know, maybe it could be a thing for, um, I don't know, like here when, when there's the, when there's the, uh, the mega bloom in, in California after like a wet winter and then, then the, then the flower, the wildflowers bloom like crazy. Everyone's always going around looking to where is it going to be? Where can I go and sort of camp out and see the see the bloom? Trying to imagine what it would be in the context of a of a large metropolitan area. I uh, I've been just writing some stuff on the side and I managed to uh, figure out a little nozzle here. Oh, cool. Um, uh, yeah, the the. Uh, I like this, you know, the, the, here's our architect, here's the map. Uh, I like this question of what are they doing? And, and you, you could take this in a lot of different places. The idea of focusing on the not evil, that's great. There's a few things. I'm sorry we're, um, we're not being super timely with the chat, but uh, there's a couple of things like where uh, uh, drones were, where drones drop off supplies for refugees. Mm. I like I like that. And I think that's probably even happening today and i think this is a great way to blow that out even further and it's like well what specifically what kind of supplies if you want it to play in the playful is it maybe dropping off toys specifically like maybe it's the non-vital supplies or stuff stuff that just enriches um uh quality of life yeah so something fun about it. i just sort of imagine yeah. that drones just like kind of parachute like <laughs> treats i don't know why they would do that oh but what kind of world would it be if just like every once and again, it's just kind of like, you know, here's a, <laughs> here's a lollipop. <laughs> it just kind of floated down. <laughs> like, uh, um, yeah, there's, there's something, there's something kind of what, oh my God, I can't completely that. nonsensical in a beautiful way about that. Yeah. The, and I, that's the other thing in terms of the style of design fiction that, that I, that I enjoy playing with. And I, I know that Julian also does is to, 
play on the side of humor and play on the side of nonsensical and maybe not deliver what would be the obviously optimal idea, but do something odd. Let somebody else figure that out and do something a little bit odd that inspires someone to get to the 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 optimal idea. Because it could start off as, you know, okay, we're going to drop lolly, lollipops to people. And then that might inspire somebody to come up with their own idea, which is like, okay, well, let's, let's drop vital supplies to people. Oh, I, I, I was going to, I was own going the to, idea. Yeah. yeah. Starbucks just like drone drop coffee. <laughs> I, just, I can yeah. see the advertisement. Someone's just sitting there talking to someone. It's like, oh, here she comes. It just holds their hand out and it's like, whoop, there's their, <laughs> there's their <lollipop. laughs> Um All right. So Dana's got a, a question here. Um, Using the archaeologist analogy, we find a map of some sort in this future, and then we make connections to other cards. Yeah, that that's a way of 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 doing it. Is we're either making a connection to the other cards, or the connection to the other card is what is infused in either the idea of the map or the idea of the object. So I think what we're talking about here is like, you know, like is the map playful? It could be. Is the object playful? It could be. Are both playful? Yes, they could be as well. This is where right now I'm feeling this is a very generative session that we're having. Like we're starting to come up with a lot of concepts. And one of these I'll scamp up as the design fiction daily for later today, if I get some, if I find the time um, to, to formalize it and turn it into something visual that I know I would normally do. Um, yes, it could be. Again, there are no rules. These are prompt cards that are designed to to uh, spark the imagination, to shortcut you having to think of, of the options. It's a starting point. It's really all it is. Uh, and then another one, uh, Dana, that you, you mentioned, I love how the thought shifts paradigm from drone as a weapon to a drone as a positive thing. And yeah, I think this is the classic, um, you know, what if it was the opposite of what you know it as? That's, a, that's always a great place to to play. Um, I, I'm starting to make it a list of, of characteristics for design fiction, fiction, because I'm noticing that you can play like the opposite uh, idea. Uh, you know, weapons become toys or toys become weapons. That's, that's an interesting place to play. Or you can do uh, what I call extremely ordinary, where something that, that is normally taken for granted today ends up becoming this really big deal later on. I, I don't have a concrete example for that. Uh, at the moment. Uh, and then there's like absurd things. I know we've mentioned stuff about like the, the, the Nabisco corporate military, like what happens when, when corporations uh, uh, become so powerful. Um, it, it's absurd. It's a bit of an absurd, a bit of a scary idea, but you know, like there's this nugget of potential truth in everything that's always worth exploring. But yeah, the, uh, I think Edward de Bono's six thinking hats, the idea is that you can, you can shift the cap of your hat in different directions, depending on what mood you're in that day as the drone flies. That's good. Yes. <laughs> Actually, that's funny as the drone flies. Um, that's what they would have said in game of Thrones. If they, if it was game of drones, uh, map of anti-drone shooter stations. That's funny because that is so true. There's always someone, um, complaining about drones. Every time I see somebody post a drone shot on Reddit, they're like, if I had my gun, Burning Man, like music drones, map as a scavenger hunt for parties. That's interesting. That makes me think of like orienteering and how maybe there's drone orienteering that kids go with their, 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 their parents to the park. Maybe it's a, that makes me think that could be to play with, play with the, the playful aspect. What if drone orienteering became a new thing that the scouts offered? What's that? What's drone orienteering? I know orient, you know, orienteering where you, it's like, um, finding your way to, through the woods or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Finding your way through the woods, like learning how to use a compass and read moss on trees and, 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 um, space, spatial awareness in the, in the forest, okay. uh, but applied to drones. This is what like scouts would do, but like, imagine if drones was part of the, the scout curricula, that'd be hilarious. Uh, UFO sighting map that has been filled in due to many drone sightings. Oh yeah. Am I, yeah. Am I drone or known? That's what you would call, am I drone or not? Um, let's see. I like the pollinators one. That's a good one. 
there was a project I worked on um, probably 25 years ago now. This was all pre Google Maps, where we um, it was with this art organization called iBeam. We went around Manhattan and identified all the uh, surveillance cameras, and we almost did it like 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 field um, like wildlife observers. So the Audubon and, guide to uh, surveillance cameras. Yeah, and so we this would, is a would speckled would, surveiller. We would mark where it was. And there was a whole list of different types of surveillance cameras, like domed ones and, you know, um, operation, you know, say so they had all these beautiful schematic or um, line drawings of them. And it was, it was, it was part of a project to be able to create a routing map that avoided cameras. So you could actually route from A to B. It was beautiful. It was all pre Google maps. So it was kind of remarkable to, to create that technology. It's, it's sort of the inverse, like, if there were a drone, you know, maybe the maybe a map would be how to avoid the drones, where to go to avoid the drones. There's a uh, a liked comment uh, by Natalie about drone maps for garbage collection. Maps show up at points in neighborhoods where garbage collection. Uh, okay, so you can discard items uh, for huge but delightfully playful drones to collect. I, I like this idea and it makes me think of uh, Japan. Uh, I know in Tokyo, it's impossible to find, it's impossible to find a garbage can anywhere. Meanwhile, the city is super, super clean. Um, and I, I could imagine a world where, where maybe if you have to discard something, I'm done with my candy wrapper. You just grab your phone, summon a drone, it flies by, you know, you stuff it in its little drone claws, then it flies away with your candy wrapper and disposes of it. I think that's, that's an awesome, that's an awesome little idea. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I like this trip. What would the merit badge look like for, because there's cause one of yeah. the archetypes, Dre, is the, is the so um, embroidered patch, right? Actually, yeah. that's a good one, because it kind of looks like, if I remember correctly, it yep. looks like a uh, scout patch. It's that's funny, I made. Cool. That's amazing. Like, um, yeah. You know, level one scout, uh, um, you know, merit badge, I guess they are. Doesn't have to be boy scout, just be scouts. Yeah, 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 you're right. Sorry. Just, just oh, full cool. on scout. Sorry, I don't want to get in trouble here. I love it. Yeah, self that's discarding drones. Self discarding self -discard drones. Self -discarding <laughs> drones? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm out. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Yeah. And of course, it like dives into a into a ditch and kind of becomes part of the ecosystem. Or something. <laughs> so I'm just imagining. I've had. I've had. I play with drones, so I, I've had drones break on me. Um, but maybe if those drones that if like one propeller is out, the three other ones will like just take it to the landfill. Yeah. Just hover above the landfill and then and then and then die. Or to the recycle center. I mean, I think the landfill will just become the recycle center one of these days. It'll right. just be full of these little little robot drones picking away at it. Right. Try finding the good stuff. Yeah. Let's see and here. Like, just the idea of self-discarding. Dre, that's like a, I could see the, you know, and maybe it's just like, um, because, uh, you know, dr um, to the, for the most part, I mean, you know more than I do, but, you know, drones are pretty they're pretty, you, you don't just get one on a whim. It's kind of like, you know, a bit of an investment and you, you hope it lasts as long as possible. But the idea that you walk into a bodega and you're, and, 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 and you're like, oh, look, they've got the uh, Nabisco drone. Um, yeah. The 24 hour drone. And you're like, cool, this is great. This is all I need. I'm only going to be around for 24 hours, less than a day. So this thing can follow me around and uh, you know, do my selfie thing, capture yeah. all the stuff. Do my broadcast, and when I'm done, when I head to the airport, I just kind of throw it in, throw it in the bin. And it, and it's like made of, you know, I don't know, it's made of something that makes it feel like, I don't know, like the same way you might pick up, you go to the beach and you're like, damn it, I forgot my sun hat. And you get one that you don't really care all that much about. Like I just need Wait, to really man. protect. Well, it's just head. a drum, drum with a sombrero that just hovers above your head all day. Keeps you keeps the sun away from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's totally gonna happen. Uh, sombrero drone. 
I don't know how to write sombrero. It's, come on. Does it do uh there we go. Okay, that's that's just that's too funny. Uh Lee did uh I like this idea. I like this this um the map could rep be a representation of a game board. Cause that's really what a game board is, right? It's a it's a it's a map of playfulness. Mm. It's, it's how you get around. I like this, I, I like that that um that lateral thought. Let's see, Hunger Games World. What do I say? Agents and Yeah, a drone that anticipates your needs. I can't click on links right now because I think I'm going to destroy my my setup if I do anything like that. Um, map of drone ad free zones. See, that's that's unfortunately going to be a thing. That's it's not even going too far in the future. I think we're going to start to see drones flying around, like the equivalent of the banners on the back of airplanes. Right at the beach. it's just at a smaller scale. It's going to come right by your head. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm only hitting the merit badge comment here. Um, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. So funny. Okay. I I feel like based on just this session here, we've covered a lot of ground and found some, there's a, there's a ton of stuff here, some interesting ideas. There's like a week of design fiction dailies right there that I could, I could sink my teeth into. Um, yeah. Burner yeah. And that's not it. And that's not everything. Burner, I'll have burner to drone. It's the burner drone. The yeah. The burner, the burner drone. The anti-burner. The burner, drone. Yeah. The, the anonymous burner drone. Um, Cause right now you have to, uh, put your information on your drone. If you register your drone in Canada or the United States, you have to have your name and your phone number on it. You have to register with the the um, the United States version. Uh, I forget what they're called. The okay. FAA, yeah. uh, which I, I've registered mine with the FAA. But um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, the and yeah, trip the they are using like just DJI consumer drones in Ukraine. Like that's like the same hobby drone I have is what they're using and they're just kitting them. They're kitting them out. That's really, really good. All right. So let's, uh, let's do this. we got a bit of time. Uh, I'm in no hurry. Julian, how are you doing? I'm good. Looks like we still have some people hanging out. So we'll uh, let's do another little quick session. See if we can come up with some other, uh, some other ideas. Is there another technique or did somebody want to come and join the party because we have the ability to unmute people and uh oh so here so so the, so the one step that we didn't do um we'll do, oh, yeah. time is, is actually do the 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 production and trip asks dre how do you come up with a professional looking photo each day uh, okay <laughs> he, well, he drinks lots of red bull and uh <laughs> i don't drink any red bull i do drink a lot of water and sometimes a soda stream in the water um the so trip that's that's something i definitely want to dig into i think for today's session this is a bit of a test um in in showing off what we're doing here with the cards i realize i'm not showing the cards anymore boom um so this this is it this is like technically i think this is the hard part is coming up with the ideas it's the fun part it's the hard part and then the the um, convergent part where you try to bring it all together and turn it into something, that's definitely something I'm going to want to do. Um, I, probably the next one is quickly come up with an idea and then execute it from beginning to end so you can that's see the great. process. Yeah. Uh, but the, you start digging into like the just the the actual material techniques, like yeah. how are you using mid journey or how are you using mm -hmm. shutterstock or or shot deck or whatever yeah exactly exactly so i uh i'm mainly using to just tell you what i'm doing right now i'm mainly using mid journey as the tool to help uh come up with uh visuals uh i do have an account with envato elements and they have a lot of stock assets including mockups so there's no point in reinventing the wheel when somebody's already uh, created the mock-up of something out there, and all I have to do is is uh, change the label on the packaging. However, I never stop at just changing the label on the mock-up. I always like to play with the 
maybe change the background, make it my own. I don't want somebody to look at it and go, oh, this is the mock-up that Dre used to make his design fiction daily. So I'll, I'll change the background. I'll play with the lighting. I'll mess with the colors. I'll just do things to turn it into my own. And I would say the same thing with a lot of AI stuff. Uh, I, I, I often don't just take the wholesale render that Midjourney gives me. And I, I like to get in there and either... Uh, you know, I'll add stuff, uh, the the type uh, elements, I'll uh, do multiple renders and composite my favorite stuff together. And then I use a lot of Illustrator. I do all my layouts in Illustrator. I do all my mockups uh, in Photoshop. And whether you're using Creative Cloud, you know, Adobe uh, Designer, uh, or not Adobe, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo are viable. Or if you want to do it for free, you can use Inkscape or the GIMP, uh, there's tons of tools at everyone's disposal. Uh, you could even just do it in Canva. That would be something I would consider doing is even uh, coming up with like, what are the low budget design fiction uh, production ideas? Like, hey, let's just use Canva, something everyone's got access to, or let's even try to build something using um, uh, Google Slides. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, friend of our did friend of ours did a, a world world running document in Google um, uh, yeah. Word. What it was Google. What what is Word called? Pages or whatever it's called. Google Docs. Google Docs. There you go. See, and uh, like that's a piece of design fiction as far as I'm concerned. Um, and uh, and it was done in Google Docs. So many tools out there. But yeah, I'll definitely want to do that. Um. Yeah, and actually, it's a good point, Nick, putting links to where you can find good design resources that I might even create a um, a design fiction directory of some of the resources that I use. And I might even That'd be great. Uh, like a little like a just an yeah. index to these different tools. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about just creating archetype mockups on my end, like just here's a like, here's the archetype, I can create a Photoshop mockup, you can just download the layers and plug in your words. And now you've got that. So that could be really fun. Yeah. Uh, a fun thing to do. We um, did have that project that um, that uh, I, it would be fun to get back to, which was um, Isabella had the idea of doing the archetype, a book of archetypes. Yeah. Of you know of of a whole bunch of different kinds of event tickets, a whole bunch of different kinds of uh, I don't know. Yeah. We, we name all the archetypes. Maps. Um, uh, tourist guides you know, all, all that kind of stuff, just, just to be, just to provide that as a, as a visual reference, identity cards, things, yeah, from like wallets, all that stuff. All right. So here's, here's what I'm, here's what I'm thinking. We're going to do, we're going to do a, do a fun little thing. Yeah, this is Nick. I, I'm breaking the fourth wall. I'm, I'm, busting here. I'm, I'm coming over the loud system uh, because what I think is really interesting and a lot of folks uh, here have been commenting, I can't write fast enough, you know, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what I really get from a lot of folks is a lot of how to still, you know, is just, you know, going from the cards, you know, through the mirror board and, and then out to what you're doing. And I think it would be really cool for each one of your design fiction dailies, very similar to what you were saying, just list all of the different platforms that you hit in order to create that one, each entry, daily entry, you know, I mean, it's going to have the standard Adobe, yeah. but uh, like particular mock-up, uh, generator or yeah, with each I've, one have all those resources listed. I think it would be really cool. Yeah. I've got a couple of entries, uh, on my, on design fiction daily that are uh, paywalled or they're for the paid and I, and I, for the paid subscribers and they, th I walk through, um, uh, what I'm using, where I'm getting stuff. Uh, I even have some time-lapse videos of me working in Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, I've even used, this is going to be another workshop thing that I want to do is um, I use chat GPT. I've built design fiction generator prompts in chat GPT where you, uh, one of them is, is just like, uh, it's, I say, give me fiction and and it just generates design fiction. And another one is uh, a workshop facilitator where it asks you which cards you've pulled, and then it synthesizes some thought starters for you. And in those posts, they're long posts, uh, I, um, it's clear that I don't really use what it tells me, but I do use it as inspiration to, to generate ideas. Uh, so what I did here 
is to um i just i just threw out some random cards uh let's see i've got an identity card here we've got a branded beverage beverage as an object there is a generative pre-trained attribute and a patrol action oh. Mm. And this is this is where I'm I'm uh, Are we wondering if up from the uh, from from the studio coming down to the stage, did we decide that or no? Yeah, if anybody from the studio audience would like to come to the uh, to the stage, uh, we can unmute you and we can just play with this. Or if you looking at these cards have any ideas, just drop them in the chat. I think this is a just kind of the fun uh, freestyle. Julian and I did some some freestyling, and it, it only got better when everyone. Got involved, so I think that. Uh, let's, yeah, raise let's, your uh, let's, want to, uh, if you want to. Yeah, raise your little Zoom hand. Yeah, people are dropping out. It's been about an hour, but uh, we're going to stick around for a bit. Anybody who wants to continue to play, we're we're still playing. It could be one at a time. It could be a few people. It makes no difference. So we got identity card. Branded beverage, generative pre-trained patrol. Wow. Jason, you interested in joining? You just shove him on the stage. You no, know, you no. Know, I think he he <laughs> should. He... <laughs> I'm here. Hey, man. I Jason. love this. I like this one. Yeah, Jason's a good friend of mine. He uh, he's the guy behind the creative algorithm that I recommend on my on my blog, and uh, I talk to design fiction with him all the time, which is super fun. But what do you, you got? Any ideas? Yeah, I I love the idea of uh, a patrol guard um, at a I don't know some kind of some kind of a a, a company or um, out in the middle of nowhere but where uh, they're identified by their, either their coffee mug or their thermos. And it's actually created every single day when they come into work and it's what they hold and it's what they carry around with them. And it's to identify that they're uh, a legitimate um, security guard, I suppose. So it's, so it's actually generated every single time they come in and it's based on, I don't know, either a keyword of theirs or something, but it's, it's a form of, of identification that nobody would be able to see. Maybe it's bet, like they'd be undercover, so you don't know that they're um, that they're actually a guard of some sort. Um, but they could be identified by the the other people that work there. Like, I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Well, you know what? It, it made me think while you were saying that. It made me think of like. You know when you you bought a coffee at a different coffee shop and you're meeting your friend at a different coffee shop and then you feel bad because you're walking into a Starbucks with like a second cup coffee and and I'm just imagining like what happens in a world where these patrol bots know uh you know they look for you you know the, are you do you have the right branded mug in our branded environment or even a worse offense would be yes. yeah somebody with like a Starbucks thermos mug that just puts like I don't know, like a Keurig coffee in it in the morning at home. And Starbucks is like, no, no, no. Only Starbucks goes in that mug. And we have, we have, we have patrol robots that, that are pre-trained to detect the vapor and aroma emanating from your thermos mug. And we can tell if it's a, if it's genuine Starbucks or not. And if it's not, we will pour it out in front of you. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe the <laughs> Starbucks has just got some kind of tracer um, characteristics in the actual coffee so it's just detected by some uh some sensor i know what you mean it's 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 interesting to think about that like the it's um it's not a very it's not a very uh <laughs> i think we're laughing because we're kind of like this will be the future that we end up getting for our, <laughs> for our sins. <laughs> uh, yeah that's exactly the future we're getting yeah brand bouncers i like it Brand bouncers. Yeah, brand bouncers. Good touche. That's a good one. Yeah, I mean, and it's interesting because that that's a that's a, you know, like haven't 
you you sort of in, in in this thing you sort of you know wondering like uh, not, not you're not necessarily ending ending up with like a actual thing but you you've you know you came up with an idea for a thing it's called brand bouncers like maybe that's a uh, you know it's a, it's a new role you know that, that's what they're called they're not you know it sounds like nice and polite um better better than a, than a security guard because that always got has that kind of negative connotation to it but now they're just called brand bouncers sounds a little bit more fun right right bouncers are only places where people have fun and they start having too much fun so they need to be told to leave i like it i think i think it's a good example of where the the deck can lead you um and so if you expect it to lead you you expect too much that it's going to lead you in one particular direction you're expecting too much about what the conclusion might be i don't know there's a good chance of being disappointed as opposed to the unstructured play I didn't know that we could build a spaceship out of a piece of cardboard and uh, an old umbrella, but look, we managed to do it. Doesn't look like a spaceship that I know, but feels like one. <laughs> They're sent to coffee shops to get rid of the competition. Uh, a friend of mine has a... Um, a chocolate business um, with a, with a very nice retail um, shop, and he got into disputes with, uh, and he started he served coffee. There's another chocolate shop that wanted to show him up, and so started um, giving you know the, the people with the platter with the demonstration or the uh, sample coffee started yeah. that right in front of his shop. It was so obnoxious, and it was it was also kind of a little bit slightly <clears throat> pathetic in the way. Uh, the uh, the children from succession are ultimately pathetic. It's just kind of like, what are you doing? Grow up. I love that we got brand bouncers from the last one. All right, I pulled a few more cards. Let's see, the first one is retail signage. I know it's hard to read, and now I've got the sun shining through things. The second one is uh, imaging thing. The third one is the attribute is artificially intelligent, which is kind of close to what we did before. So why don't we change that? Why don't we say okay. it listens? It's an imaging thing that listens. Mm. And the action is to repurpose. Retail signage, imaging thing, listens. The, I and okay, here, here's, here's, a, here's a thought of where my brain goes when I'm doing some design fiction. Uh, I'm making a connection now. And um, there are, uh, I know that there's some technologies, there's some video, there's some video technology that can detect the vibration on glass, the microscopic movement of vibration on glass, and only through the visual vibration, it can actually create the sound. That was creating that vibration. So that's an actual, you know, MIT technology that that that's playing around. So this is an example of of uh, a connection might might be made. And I know that this exists, and I've thought about it. And uh, you know, today's uh, you know innovation might become tomorrow's commonplace um, thing, technology that we all take for granted. So this makes me think of. You know, it, it's like a, the same way that there's a, it's a signage for a store that is like a, the way there was a film development, a photo lab, but you bring your video and what it'll do is it'll listen to the, the video and it'll try to find the sounds that were inside your video. So you can bring your old super eight, your old super eight film that's silent and it'll it'll look for the vibrations on the hard surfaces nearby and try to dis detect microscopic things and try to extract the sound of like a long lost loved one's voice when they were younger from that using whatever chat gpt store recycler for used cans and bottles you can use to improve your social scoring and get a coupon for brand scan by the recycler hmm Nice. I like that. What the, and the listening part, I wonder if, I mean, it doesn't have to be, I'm just, I'm, I, I like the thing well, where it scans because it sees, but then what is it listening for? What could, what could be an interesting thing it listens for? 
Well, a, a couple of things that, you know, it could listen in the literal sense, but it could listen to you in the um, anticipatory sense. Like, what do you mean? Here's the, the final slurp of a can of soda. You know, when people are like, I feel heard, you know, when somebody like, like when somebody says something that, that, that relates to you or it's, they're listening to you on, on an emotional sense, or like they, they, they get you mm -hmm. empathy or sympathy yeah. um, like that. So it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be audio listening. It could be emotional listening. Yeah. It anticipates your needs because it's paying attention. I like that. Cause that, that just moved the, it, it moved the, um, the, the, the action in front. You know, it's like a, it's a repurpose and the implication of recycling and reuse and circular I, economy kind of vibes. I like uh, Natalie put a, um, a comment in there. It's re retail signage that changes depending on what people are using the space for and or buying the most listening devices. That's cool. Yeah. yeah that's listening kind of devices work this out. So you know what that makes me think of? This makes me think of like a neon sign. You know, you see a neon sign where it's like, one one half of it is off. It says one thing, and then like it's like a double entendre. Give me an example. What do you mean? I, like, uh, I I I just think you know the word believe. Yeah. Like some of the letters disappear, and you have the word lie in the middle. Like by accident, because the neon's out or it something. Could right? be accident. It could be stylistic, <laughs> because the art director on the film said, "Hey, we should have a sign that yeah, flickers a very cover. specific way." Yeah. But I'm just imagining, like, what if we were doing th this type of visual double entendre? two words that 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 change based on on what's being heard around because space can be used uh, very differently like a, a in one day a, a commercial space might be used very commercially but maybe another day that commercial space might be used more like a public space to just hang out and yeah. um, and and have a picnic you know people would rather be sitting outside in the sun than inside the shops so the sign right. the sign goes from buying uh, getting something on sale to like get an ice cold something instead, because it knows that everyone's hot and complaining that they're thirsty. I like it. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. I'll flip a couple more cards and then we will bring this to Oh, look at this. The archetypes of surprise. What's it going to be? Hygiene product. Okay. We have hygiene product. Okay. We have an apparatus. I love that word. Uh, augmented and uh, institutionalized. Hmm. <clears throat> A hygiene product. When, when it's coupled with apparatus, I start going towards... Um... Um, I, I think know. of go on. I was gonna say I just think of like VR headset moisturizing cream. Like, as we start using more devices, you know, do we have like uh, anti chafing hand creams for for holding your phone all day long? Right. <laughs> right. Or yeah, just like the things like what you're gonna have. Uh... It's a grease-free cream that won't get on your screen, but it'll keep your hands protected by this from the sun SPF 30. Yeah, you're totally gonna have this kind of stuff. Like yeah. um, different, you know, whether whether it's uh legit or whether it's just kind of playing into people's fears. <laughs> Chap, Chap screen. screen. Yeah. Like a special eye like eye uh eyelid moisturizers. Yeah. Yeah. What does like institutionalize? Oh, institutionalize. That's a tough one. What does that mean? It could be something like where it's like, this is like FDA approved, you know, in the yeah. US, like Food yeah. and Drug Administration kind of dealio or authorized by Apple. Five, um, five, four out of five VR medical professionals advise the use of this. Uh, it's authorized by, authorized by Apple. Yeah, that kind it'll of only thing. It'll only dispense the cream through a lightning cable. And that, and that could appear just as like a little, you know, like a little, very simple mm. little um, authorization bug, you know, like a little logo. Exactly. That implies an entire apparatus of institutions behind the sanctioning or advisory of it. Like the in, in some toothpaste will have, you know, the dental association 
mark on yeah. it. Sure was yeah, it, it, yeah, it implies, it hints, it hints at an entire infrastructure, an entire institutional infrastructure. Um, maybe there's training, maybe it's institutionalized and that you need yeah. special training to apply it. I license I I re I re roller prescription medicine applicator for optical glitch syndrome experienced by VRI. Totally, it's just like yeah. my 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 the face sync is off in my eyes. I I I I'm, 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 I and and, and there are these drops. Remember, I we just did, like all those words like a, like a VR eyes. It was like a, it was like a drop kind of thing, that with the same implication, you know, the same idea of like yeah, of course they're going to be for overexposure to blue light you could just use oh, the apps okay that's a that's a fantastic one i just like the idea of vri VR suffering from vris yeah the eye re-roller suffering from vris augmented reality drying you out <laughs> oh geez i'm just writing that down because that that might have to become something. Preparation H becomes prep VR, or it's just preparation R, preparation reality. Yeah, a free low energy dose, public radiotherapy walkthrough apparatus. This is poetry. This is, that's just poetry. <laughs> that's great. Uh, all right. Uh, do, do, do. All right. So how about we uh, start to wrap this up? Get some, some clothing, closing, clothing thoughts. What are your thoughts on clothing? <laughs> um, the, the, okay. This was a fun session. I think we, we got a lot of good ideas out of there. I think, I think this was really, really generative. I hope that this was, this unlocked a few things in your mind about how you could use this. And again, this is just, one way that that we're using this there's no right way or wrong way you can use all the cards you can use some of the cards you can even add other cards we have a member on the discord that likes to incorporate a tarot card along with the uh, work kit to just you know add an extra flavor to what's going on so i think there's a lot that you can do in terms of these cards and um it's an open space it's like a it's almost like it's an open source game. You can come up with your own rules. And if you do come up with really, if you come up with any rules, feel free to jump on the discord and share them with us. Yeah, trip and then speaking of the turn his job into this. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of the discord, uh, there's been a whole bunch of links put in the chat to join the NFL discord. The near future laboratory discord is a pretty fantastic place. There's a lot of people on there doing a lot of interesting things. There's a bunch of us that are actively working on products from the future, including a trip in the janky time machine, like we're doing today. And, uh, uh, and Julian's got all his podcast general seminar, all kinds of interesting things to stay in, in tune. So if you do join, uh, feel free to uh, jump into the work kit creations thread. You'll see that there's been some activity in there. Uh, Will and myself, um, or Drew, sorry, Drew and myself uh, have created some design fictions in there. So if you create anything that you've got the kit uh, and you come up with anything, feel free to uh, to throw down and share your creations. This is all about uh, uh, practicing this. Uh, Thing we call design fiction, sharing it with the world and uh, making it uh, bigger, better, and more fun. Longer also, that you can life. imagine harder. Yeah, imagine harder. Imagine harder. Um, this is good. Good stuff, Dre. Designfictiondaily.com. Design Fiction Daily with Dre. The Design Fiction Daily Show. Show. Yeah, it's like uh, like Jazzer size with uh, the future. That's right. But hey, it, is it going to be a daily or a weekly? It would be funny just to make it a weekly, the design fiction daily show okay. every week. Yeah, every, every, yeah, every, yeah. Every, <laughs> well, you know what's happened? It's called designfictiondaily.com and I was literally doing it seven days a week and I I now do it Monday through Friday. Uh, and, and I haven't missed a beat for, I don't know, seven months now. 
Mm. And um, uh, I do a little bit. I do uh, mostly creating design fiction, but every once in a while, I'll pick a movie or a TV show that I like, and I like to explore the design fiction elements that are inside beyond the protagonist uh, and in the background and inspect some of that. Uh, and occasionally I'll do a work at Wednesday. I've done a dozen of those similar to what we're doing here, but I just use the cards to uh, inspire. And I tend to write that entry as a stream of consciousness. I just write it as I do it. But uh, everything I do there is um, I do it as quickly as I can to get it out there. It's the speed run for the day. And I try not to let perfectionism get in the way and I do the best I can. And now I, I go back and I look at stuff. I don't even remember that I created that. And, I, and I'm like, oh, this is good. This is good. And in hindsight, it's it's great. And I think when I published it, I was probably maybe a little bit disappointed or like, ah, oh, it didn't meet meet my uh, my standards, but it did. I just didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Anything else? Nick, do you have anything else? No, I was just uh, typing in there um, that if anybody had any feedback, I guess, for you guys on the pilot to uh, get over to the NFL Discord and uh, posted that link there. Yeah, please. So, there. And, uh, Sorry, go ahead. Obviously find Julian and Dre elsewhere on on social and wherever you might have heard uh, about this and uh, share some feedback. I know the guys would appreciate hearing some, how can we do better? They're already, look, I mean, you got a lot of people still hanging on after an hour and that's. Uh, yeah, they're, they're folks, not there. They're, folks they're that are definitely. Got nothing going to to yeah. <laughs> I commend your persistence and tenacity. Yeah. I was going to say, so when you join the Discord, um, the way the mechanics work is that you join and then introduce yourself so that we know you're a human. And then uh, then I have Augie throw a lever and then you get um, access to to most of the rest of the channels and then an invitation from me to grab a coffee. We have a coffee and then uh, another lever is thrown and you get you get access to even like all the projects. We're doing a magazine from the future of fashion. We're doing a like a like a it, magazine from the future of Hollywood or or filmed entertainment, and we're got a got a bunch of new books. Dre's also a showrunner on ABC Solar Punk, which is a book that we found once we got in the janky time machine. We ended up in someone's kind of cluttered living room, found a book. Turns out it was a children's book. We brought it back, and it tells us all the stories about the solar punk future. Um, I mean, just tons of projects going on and so the question is like how do i turn this into a job well this is when we start like join the discord and um, get involved in a project and if we do that enough i'm so confident that there will be old-fashioned style jobs to do this i'm so confident i feel like we're at the point now where we're just at the edge of this kind of imaginative practice being uh just a routine a routine kind of i'm design fiction specialist level three what are you uh level level one not to brag <laughs> so let's get involved everyone yeah it's this a point where uh augie comes into the studio with his clipboard and headphone and says like okay we're out yeah we're clear i was thinking if uh if we had a great old game show lead out that's uh that's that's what we could close with i don't have one queued up in my digit card oh, we'll have to, yeah we'll have to make on, one yeah i'm gonna get on that it's so really nice song starts playing and then the uh the host goes around and shakes the hand of all the contestants and makes light banter the credits roll filmed in front of a live studio zoom audience straight from studio city los angeles yeah, insert uh, audience clap track. That's right, yeah. All right. All right, I need to make an outro and a soundboard. Add that to my list. Yeah. And then we'll put this up on, uh, on some channel. I'm curious to see what it looks like. Now we're, now we're just doing banter. Because the for, on my end, your top-down camera is a little bit low-resi. Yeah, I'm going to get a better camera. 
I didn't have time to to take out the uh, the good camera. That's why the, today's session's a bit janky. But yeah, very yeah. very a little bit low resy, more like a lot low resy. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an old CRT tube camera. Yeah. And then I don't know, Dre. Like he, the, he now we're having fun. It's like get a bit of. Um, you know, green screen material. So the cards are actually floating in, in the vaporous um, transitory space. Yeah. <laughs> kind of vibe could be a, another not well use of time or maybe for the perfect use of time. Although I do like your, uh, that, uh, that selection of raw pine that you got there. Yep. That's just a plank of wood on a, on a, on a pair of, uh, Oh, it's, that's not rendered. No, that's not rendered. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, Mr. Render Man. <laughs> because you render any, everything. Yeah. Render all the things. Well, why'd you render it? You could just take a picture of it. It's like, it's not as much fun. Patricio, you, you asked why why poetry? It's pro I'm assuming you're referring to when I said that it was poetry that you mentioned before. Those words, uh, yeah, just poetry. Sometimes a string of sentences, a string of words that just flow off the tongue that's just poetry so that's what that's what i was getting from that <clears throat> does anyone want to unmute and ask ask questions i got another i got another five or ten minutes yeah i got i got four minutes you now have the ability to unmute <laughs> mm -hmm. i can't unmute try again i just threw the switch oh you might not have a microphone Yes, uh, uh, oh, do, do you do you listen? Yep, we can hear oh, you. Yeah. Can. Oh, I, I I misunderstood the the, the, the tone of the, of your answer. Uh, I don't I don't know if it was a, a plus, a compliment, or or, or no, it was a, no, it was a compliment. It was totally a compliment. I, I mean, it was not the, the intention to to sound poetic. Uh, no, it was no. a, just a first a first talk, and the first talks are usually you know the best. I, no, I'm no, sorry, no, I, I, I came I came I, I came late. Uh, I, I know. Um, I, I try to be more punctual next time. Oh no, no, it was great. It was a great. It was a great answer. I, uh, I just, I just loved the. It, it was just a good string of words that combined, yeah. like a technology and an idea. And I was like, yeah, I, that's good. I, I thought in a Futurama killing booth, <laughs> something like that. Oh yeah, with uh, the ability to sense where you have a, a tumor and you can do your daily therapy and for free or for or for ex being exposed to advertisement maybe yeah no that's a good one yeah. well w when will be this uh carry on next time i don't know when the next one will be but uh i feel like i i enjoyed doing this i think we probably want to do it sooner rather than later i think the next one what what we'll do is a um a quick session with the cards land on an idea and start executing it and just show what it looks like when i'm in when i'm in photoshop when i'm in illustrator when i'm sketching out the idea um yeah i feel like 90 minutes is a comfortable time to 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 speed run through an idea then everyone gets an gets gets uh, a sense of uh what it looks like to uh to uh, you know, move uh, you know as quickly as you can at the speed of thought. Yeah, and we'll we'll yeah. plan it. We'll plan it further ahead than uh, than whatever thirty six hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, thanks for showing up on such short notice. That's really awesome. Yes. Yeah, oh, I, I was looking forward, but uh, uh, right now we're at the end of the of semester. I'm working as a full time teacher this month. A place and now i will have time to participate more in the in the activities of the near future lab love it love it that's great awesome good stuff all right i got my next call in uh in 15 minutes so i'm gonna um i'm gonna clear my head um, yeah thanks for, the same. for coming along and hope to see you in the discord and uh, Dre and Nick will uh, will debrief at some point. Yeah. Yep. 
get the, anyway. I'll, get the I'll get the tape from uh from augie in the uh recording room hopefully he didn't spill a coffee on it like last time yeah that augie <laughs> yeah the writer's room is empty right now so it should be a good place to use that yeah yeah or are we not using it out of out of respect and in the sense of no we paid for it so we're still using it we're at least okay. the whole building so we're still using it check check <laughs> right are they still outside are they, are they still making a ruckus I, some of them i'm i brought lunches okay yeah i'm, I'm gonna take them some water nice all right i'm uh out. janky time machines running on e I'm on. I'm running on vapors. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go find a gas station. <laughs> EV service, right? Yeah. Biofuels. Right. right guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. See you in the future. Bye, everyone. Bye.